Okay, welcome to this lesson from the Science Revision Channel. Today, we're going to be looking at how you can learn to balance chemical equations like an absolute champ. There are lots of different ways that different teachers teach this, and there's lots of different methods of, the, of, of doing it, but the basic principles are the same. So if you follow these basic instructions, you should be able to balance anything that the exam board throw at you. So, to start off with, we'll know in chemical reactions, we have reactants, which react together, so chemicals that react together to form products. And we use this arrow sign that you can see in the middle to show that these reactants have formed these products. So step one, really, is if you ever asked to write out an equation, whether it's a word or a symbol equation, make sure you use an arrow rather than an equal sign because the reactants do not equal the products the reactants form the products next thing you need to know is about formulas so when we look at this formula over here h2o that's obviously water we need to know how many of each type of atoms that there are so when we actually look at it we can see that we have a hydrogen atom over here and a number two, which is in subscript. What that essentially means is there is two lots of whatever the atom is in front of it. So there are two hydrogen atoms. When we then look at the oxygen, there's no number after it, but its presence, just the fact that it's there, means that there is one of it. Now, a big mistake that people make when they try and balance equations is they think it's okay to stick numbers in the actual molecule or behind it. If I stuck a two over here, that would no longer be water, that would be hydrogen peroxide, which if you were to drink, it would cause you a heck of a lot of problems. So the first rule that we have is you do not stick numbers behind or in the actual molecule, you can only put numbers in front. So for example, if I stick a two over here, that means I've got two lots of water. Now if I would now have to count up the number of atoms, if I've got two lots of H2, all we do is we multiply the two by the two there and that tells me I've got four hydrogen atoms and obviously after I can see I've got two lots of oxygen, that means that I've got two oxygen atoms. Okay, so you can only stick numbers in front, you can't stick numbers behind. And the trick that we have to do when balancing equations is we have to make sure that we have the same number of each type of atoms on either side of this line. Okay, so I've drawn this line down the middle of the arrow over here to basically show that we need to have the same number of atoms on this side as we do on this side. Okay. So this is actually a balanced equation. Let's have a look and just check, okay? So rule one, what we've got to try and do is start on the left-hand side with this atom over here. Now, some people will say start with metals or start with non-metals. I always just say start on the left and then work your way across the equation, okay? So we start with carbon, and if we're to count the number of carbons, we can see there's one carbon atom on this side, and there is a one carbon atom on this side, so that's balanced. In terms of oxygen, it's O2, so there are two oxygen atoms on this side, and there are two oxygen atoms on this side. So the atoms are balanced on either side, there's the same number of carbons on each side, the same number of oxygens on each side. So, let's now have a look and see what happens when it doesn't balance. So, I have an equation over here which shows the formation of water. I have hydrogen over here, H2 plus O2. I have my arrow, make sure it's not an equal sign. And then I have H2O being formed, which is obviously water. The first step that we do, as I've said, is start with the atoms furthest on the left over here. I'm going to draw my line down the middle just so that I know that everything on this side needs to balance everything on this side over here. First things first, I count my number of hydrogens. And I can see I've got two hydrogens over here and I've got two hydrogens on this side. So the hydrogens are balanced. 
When I then look at the oxygens, I can see I've got two oxygen atoms on this side, but I only have one oxygen atom on this side. Now the instinct for people would be to say, stick a number two at the end there, but you're not allowed to do that. That's now made hydrogen peroxide, as I explained before. You can only stick numbers in front. So the only way you can possibly make two oxygen atoms on this right-hand side is to stick a big two in front of the water molecule. So now I have two oxygens over here, and I have two oxygens over here. Remember, everything after the two, I have two lots of. So two lots of H2, two lots of oxygen over there. Now some of you might look at that and say, yep, that's balanced. But you're wrong, because if we now go back to the start again, we can see that the number of hydrogens has now changed in the equation. I've got two hydrogen atoms over here, but now I have four hydrogen atoms over here. So how do I get four hydrogen atoms on this side over here? Well, the simple thing to do is to stick a two in front. Therefore, two times by two means I've got four hydrogens over here. I've got four hydrogens over here. I've got two oxygens over here. And I now have two oxygens over here. Because remember, the two in front means everything after is multiplied by two. And that is balanced. Okay, here's another good one for us to try. Because this one has some odd numbers in it. So it makes it just a little bit more challenging. But the principle is exactly the same. Okay, if you want to pause this one and have a go at first, now's the time to pause. Okay, hopefully you've had a crack at it. Let's have a look and see how you've done. So, remember, first things first, I want to make sure all the atoms on this left-hand side here, in my reactant side, equal the same number of atoms on this side. So I need the numbers to balance up. So I start with my one on the furthest left, so we start with nitrogen. We've got N2 over here. So two nitrogen atoms over here, I've only got one over here. So to remedy that, the simplest thing that I can do is to stick a, you got a, a two in front of the NH3. That now means I've got two nitrogen atoms over here. We've also got two lots of H3, but we'll get to that in a minute. And I've got two lots of nitrogen over here. So that's balanced for now. The next thing I'm now going to do is I'm going to move my way over to the hydrogens. So when I look at H2, I can see here I have two hydrogen atoms. But on this side now, I've got a three over here. So that's three hydrogens. And I need to multiply everything by this two. So two times by three means I've got six hydrogen atoms on this side where my products are. So how can I make it so that I have six hydrogen atoms on this side over here? Well, I've got a two over here. So whatever I stick in front number wise over here, when I multiply by two, it needs to give me six. So what number multiplied by two will give me six? That is a three. Three times by two is six. I've got here two times by three is six on this side. But what we should do is good practice is always check. So let's quickly run through the equation again. Two nitrogens, two nitrogens. Six hydrogens over here, because it's three times by two. And over here I've got three hydrogens, but it's times by two, which gives me six. Okay, this next one is a bit of a bigger equation, but the principle is exactly the same. So I need to make sure that I've got the same number of carbons, hydrogen and oxygens for my reactants as I do for my products. So let's go through it and count them up. Don't be put off by the fact it's a big equation. The principle and the rules, if you follow them, it'll work regardless of how big the equation is. So first thing is we start off on the left hand side. We look at the carbons. So there's one carbon on this side. There's one carbon on that side. It's balanced okay we then look at the hydrogens we've got four hydrogens on this side we've got two hydrogens on this side so to make it up to four I need to stick a number over here and that number when I multiply by two 
gives me four. So I stick a two in front, so that will give me four hydrogens. So I've got one carbon, one carbon, four hydrogens, four hydrogens, and now I need to make sure that my oxygens are right. So I look on this side and I can see here there's two oxygens. When I look on this side, I can see here there are two oxygens. Now, what a lazy student does is they look and they say, yep, yeah, it's balanced there, it's balanced there, but they don't check the rest of the equation. There's an oxygen atom over here which we have encountered. In fact, there's not just one, there's two of them. So when we actually count the oxygens on this side, we've got two. On this side, we've got two and another two, which gives me four oxygen atoms. So I need to have four oxygen atoms on this side. So in order to get four oxygen atoms, I need to stick a number in front of it over here. And you guessed it, that number is a two. So quickly double check, one carbon, one carbon, four hydrogens, four hydrogens, four oxygens. And here we've got two and then another two, which gives me four oxygens on that side as well. So that is balanced. And if you got that right, well done. Right, so what you might want to do is have a crack at these three equations. Uh, you might want to pause this and then I'll work my way through them. Um, I suggest you pause the video now and have a go. Okay, hopefully you've uh, managed to see if you can balance these. So let's have a look and see what the answers are for this one. So I'll work through these really, really quick. Obviously, you can pause it and stop to double check, see that I'm right. Okay, so this very first one over here, I've got one iron on this side, one iron on that side. Two hydrogens on this side, two hydrogens on this side, one sulfur over here, one sulfur over there, four oxygens over here, and four oxygens over there. So that one is actually balanced already. And the next one, when we look at it, we can see here we've got one magnesium on the reactant side. We've got one magnesium on the product side. I've got one hydrogen on the left side, but I've got two on the right side. So what I need to do is to make two on this left side. So I stick a two there. That means I now have two hydrogens on this side and I've got two hydrogens on this side. But it also means I now have two nitrogens on this side. And if you look at this over here in the brackets, sometimes you'll see this where there's a number inside the bracket and outside. That three over here means I've got three oxygen atoms. But the two outside the bracket means everything inside here is multiplied by two. Okay, so what this tells me is that I've got two nitrogen atoms over here, and I've got two nitrogen atoms over here, so that's fine. I have two times by three, I've got six oxygen atoms on this side, and when I look on this side over here, I can see I've got three oxygens there, but there's a two outside, so I've got two lots of that, so that is six oxygen atoms over here. So I've got six here, I've got six there, the hydrogens are balanced, that is balanced if you put a two in front of it there. And then our last one, let's have a look at this. Okay, so I've got one zinc atom over here. I've got one zinc atom on the other side, so that's balanced. I've got one hydrogen atom on the reactant side, but I've got two on this side over here. So I need to stick a two in front over here so that I now have two hydrogen atoms. So I now have two hydrogens here, two hydrogens there, but look what this has done. It means that I now have two lots of hydrochloric acid, which you can see there, HCl, which means I've got two lots of hydrogen, but I also have two lots of chlorine. So I now need to make sure that I've got chlorine balanced on this side over here. So I can't put a number behind, the only place I can put a number is in front, so I stick a big two over there in front. Now, those of you who've been, you've already had a go at this, what you'll realize is that that's actually messed me up a little bit because I now have two zincs over here, but I've only got one zinc over here. 
So what I need to do is go back to the start with my numbers in place and see what I need to do. So I've got one zinc over here. I've got two zincs over here. So I need to make this a two. So I stick a two in front, looks like a Z there. So I've got two zincs over here. I've got two zinc atoms on this side. I've got two hydrogens on this side. I've got two hydrogens on this side. I've got two chlorines on the reactant side and I've got two chlorines over here. So this is now balanced. I hope you found that useful. Uh, I'll do a second video on some more advanced equations which have odd numbers and so on in it, uh, which students always find a little bit more difficult. But I hope that's helped. If it has helped, then give it a thumbs up or subscribe. Uh, otherwise, have a great day.